This video is brought to you by Photogenic by BenQ. Please check out this Facebook page for the latest news, videos and articles about photography and so much more. Let's get started with opening Nuke. That's probably going to be the best part. So um, I'm going to open Nuke in a specific way. Uh, for those of you that use Nuke in production, you probably know that a lot of times Nuke has their own pipeline. So I'm going to launch Nuke from a terminal and not from the normal installation of Nuke. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm running quite a lot of specific tools and specific scripts that only work um, if I run it through the terminal. Uh, because a lot of the pipeline, I'm going to talk a lot about this pipeline tomorrow. Uh, so you'll see it tomorrow on my presentation. Uh, some of these tools that we've built specifically to run Nuke in very complex uh, visual effects projects. Uh, but if I go to shot 590, I have to make a note because it's so many shots, I can't even remember what it was what. Um, I just wanted to show you this really quickly before we go. So this is for the same cinematic that I'm going to show you tomorrow, um, which is um, uh, for the Heroes Arena project. So here's a really, really nice trick. So we really didn't have time to do, uh, well, not time, <laughs> time, time money, right? Time slash money, it's the same thing. So we didn't have time to do this. So basically I had the character, here's the main character. She's like, you know, uh, looking around. It was supposed to be raining. It's supposed to be raining here. And of course, when it rains, you should have water on her face, right? There should be drops of water on her face. Now. We couldn't really uh, do this anymore. There was no time to do it. Uh, it was too expensive for us to get a particle system guys to do that. So I ended up like thinking, okay, so can I do this in 2D? Why not? You know, I'm the king of elements, right? I'm sure I can find a way to do this. Um, so I, what I did was this. I ended up uh, loading up the uh, UVs of her. So I brought out, brought out the UVs and I, I bought, I went to a website called uh, M water and they have a lot of water like basically they just sell water they have water drops they have water droplets they have rain against the the glass you name it and so it's a bunch of layers of red footage with rain and and so I picked this up and I started I got a bunch of them so I, there's a bunch of different ones here so there's like condensation uh, uh, water other uh, water particles and so what I did was I started merging it on top of her so i'll show you what i mean like if i don't put this grade node you see i started pinpointing where the drop should be so basically i started i started merging with transforms the droplets on areas of her face now it's only this side because she's only facing the face on that side to the camera there's no point for me to do the drops on the back because you don't see them you're only facing the camera and so basically if i play this back you basically get droplets out of her face like that um, and so it kind of looks like it's drops uh, running out of her face, right? And so then I did the same on the other side, uh, on this one here as well. So this is the metal armor, the metal armor, sh the shiny armor, where I have basically a bunch of water droplets and water uh, things going on. And so I apply that into the 3D system. Uh, you're gonna have to bear with me because um, I, I have to uh, turn this on, the geometry. And it's gonna probably complain that it's not on. Yeah, there you go. Complains because I just loaded the shot. And then I have to reload. And so if I go here to her, like that's her, right? Um, and if I go into the solid, uh, this is her alembic cache, so she's moving. And so you see, I have the water there on her face. So basically, if I play this back, you can clearly see that, uh, well, I don't know if it's going to play back. Alembic caches in Nuke are really slow. And I, I cannot, for the sheer, I cannot know why, because we have, you know, we have real-time engines these days. How the hell is this not going to play back? Like, look at it. It's so shit, the quality. Why doesn't it play back? I never understood why the foundry just doesn't apply a, re a real-time engine to their 3D system. Never really understood. But you see, this is the thing. You have droplets attached to her face now. Um, that's the idea, at least. And then on the other side, we have droplets attached to her armor. So I have basically, uh, if I put texture here uh, and I put the light on, you see you have her there. So if you just wait a little moment, and if I go to the 2D system, it's a bit heavy, 
You just have to bear with me. You basically get this. It is a bit heavy, and I think I rendered it. Yeah, yes, I did. There's the render. So what I did was I rendered it like that. So basically, I have this. I have water droplets going on her face, water droplets going on on her armor. It doesn't really matter if it doesn't look realistic, because I bet I'll tell you that it looks at the end. It looks realistic. So it's a bit weird, I know, because it kind of looks. But you see, you get like some nice water droplets on this area here. Get some nice droplets going on there, and of course the face. Then what I do, of course, this was rendered. Um, basically, I, I did a, 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 a scan line render with the motion blur on. Then I call the correct and use the masks of the object IDs to cut it. And that's why it's only available on certain parts. Then I did a bit of a ramp because I didn't want the mouth to have it open. So I have like a little radial there masking it. And then I masked it with the object ID. Now this is going to become a bit heavy now because I need to kind of, yeah, there you go. So that's it. And then it gets merged there. So basically, and then I call it correct it again, and then I merge it on top as a screen. So basically what you get is you get this. You get these nice little droplets of water, and you get these nice droplets of water on the metal thing. Then, of course, you continue working, and you do all the color corrections, and all the fog, and all the depth of field. By the time you get to the depth of field, the depth of field kind of massages everything in anyway, because there's a bunch of depth of field there. So it kind of looks like droplets, but it's not really droplets. It's a bit like that. Uh, so by the time you end, you end up looking at the final shot, that's how it looks. So you basically have rain, which by the way, the rain is a mix of 3D with a, a 3D rain mixed with elements as well. So I've mixed both of them. Uh, and so you get this. You basically get droplets of water falling through her face. And you have this look of wetness going around her, her metal thing, which I think it's quite a convincing look, right? I mean, it kind of looks OK. It looks nice, so it works. I did do this on a on. I, this was a last minute thing, and it was like on the last few days of the production. If I had time, I would have done it a bit more properly made. I would have put like one droplet on a specific area, another droplet on a specific area. It takes a bit of time, but you would have gotten a lot more nicer uh, droplets. But it still works nicely, I think. And you get all these nice little pings of water there, you know. The same goes for the for the rain itself. The rain on the background is also made on a very special way. So if you look at the background there, that's the rain I have. So basically I have on the background some rain, which is a 2D element. Then I use the background, which is that one. Then I blur the background. Color correct the background and multiply it by the by the water. That means the water droplets pick up the color of the background to pretend to be a refraction. Um, and then you color correct it a little bit, and then you just get some highlights uh, in. And then it, that goes in as the little pieces of brighter areas get some rain. Only the brighter areas. And then the same goes for the rain on top. So the rain on top is where's the rain? So the rain, yeah, there we go. So that's the other rain. Uh, so there's more rain here. So these are rain elements as well. Same deal here. I have the actual full image getting merged there. So the reason I want to show you this is then I blur the background a lot. I color correct it. And then I have the rain. I sharpen it. And then I multiply it. And so you see you get color in the rain which is nicer because then when you merge it together, then you get the rain to be colorized on top. And so if I take this away, you get really, really dull gray rain. But if you colorize it, then you get the pings of the blonde uh, air, of the blue area. It all kind of like fits together much better, you know, if you multiply the rain by the background blurred version. It's just a little trick, I'm gonna leave you to it. And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to stop here because um, uh, otherwise, I won't be able to prepare the next uh, workshop, which is in 10 minutes. So um, I'm going to leave you guys to this. Um